The Appointment Committee of Parliament has concluded a three-day marathon vetting exercise of President Museveni's designated ministers to different ministerial dockets. However, in tonight's vetting exercise, State Minister for Disaster had a baptism in fire to justify why the committee should save his neck following a series of disasters that have hit the country, claiming people's lives and leaving many homeless. I have assured them that first of all, I'm very happy that the ninth parliament, in its wisdom, elevated the Department of Metrology into Metrology Authority from just a department in the Minister of Water. The idea is to make it self-accounting and also to build its capacity with the modern equipment and probably also stuff it with a very, very scientific um, a, a, a group of, experienced group of scientists so that they can be able to predict with a bit of precision uh, the, 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 the changes associated with climate change. A Etraru was traumatized by questions to do with the changing climate and inaccurate weather forecasts by the Meteorological Department at Entebbe. As you must have seen yesterday, the temperatures fell very suddenly and yet there is no rain anywhere. It has been very hot, the country has been very, it continues to be dry, but the temperatures fell from I think about something, 30 degrees something, to about 12, 16 Celsius. That is something that you should not take very ordinary. It must be something that should be a, a source of concern. So, so emergencies are going to be many in the country and in the region like now. There is a dry spell sweeping the entire country and creating people not to even have meals in some parts of the country. But is there anything being done by the Ministry of Disaster Preparedness and Relief to address the recurrent climatic disasters claiming lives of people? We have mapped Uganda. We have done what we call uh, disaster risk mapping of the country. This has helped us to establish, to understand that this area, for example, is going to be continuously prone to landslides. This one will be prone to flooding. This will be prone to drought and stuff like that. So we have that now, a map of the country, which captures almost unique differences that Uganda has in terms of disasters. So there are, there are, there are areas that when we receive a lot of rain, then we must expect floods. These are low-lying areas like Teso, like the, the districts surrounding Mount Telegon, Butaleja, Bududa. They will, you will expect them to, to flood. But what are the big challenges facing the disaster docket? If you go to Teso, the swamps that used to filter water into Lake Kyoga, most of them are silted. So, so that's one of the challenges. There are areas which will suffer Overtly, you will see there will be flooding, there will be, there will be like, 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 like Kasese. Because the rivers that are meant to channel water from the, 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 the Ruizori are also silted. Like Nyamwamba and, and those kind of, they are silted. So you will expect that to happen. So, so, so this, then Karamoja, the first lady, Madam Janet Museven, when while she was Minister of Karamoja Affairs, tried her best to elevate the Karimojong from a basket case, from people who are depending on emergency relief to people who are self-reliant in terms of food. But the weather has continued to slap them on their faces. So I think what Karimoja needs, like many parts of the country, is irrigation. While there are challenges, some efforts are underway to address the identified manageable critical areas. Some work going on. The silting the rivers is, is critical. Uh, regenerating the mountains, like planting forests in the mountains, is extremely critical. And we're working on that with a number of other partners, including NEMA. Uh, and, and then the Teso region, we are insisting that we must also desilt the dams that were silted over the years and persuade our people to leave silting the swamps in the name of growing rice.
while in other parts of the country, local leaders are resorting to tough measures of dealing with encroachers. We ask HRO whether whipping encroachers and flogging them is the ideal solution to conserve the environment. I want to endorse whipping. I personally whipped people sometimes before, but I was reminded that it is not good. So I, I would uh, so, so I, um, I don't now endorse it, you know. Uh, so, but, uh, but if there is a firm way of reminding people that it's wrong to destroy forests recklessly, I think people must be reminded very firmly. Timothy Spassi, Gesture Vision, Parliament.